My name is Scott Simpson, and this is the RSNA Consensus Statement on Reporting of CT Findings Related to COVID-19. This was published in Radiology, Cardiothoracic Imaging in March of 2020. In the body of Table 1, there are four columns. The first column is the COVID Imaging Appearance Classification, where there are four categories. The second column is the rationale and the establishment of those categories, followed by the CT findings associated with those categories, and lastly, the suggested reporting language. Let's look at the individual categories, the first being typical CT appearance for COVID-19. These are commonly reported CT features of COVID-19 in the literature of relatively greater specificity. That is, not only are they commonly seen with COVID-19, they are more distinguishable from other routinely seen acute lung diseases, particularly in highly prevalent COVID-19 areas. The first two columns reflect the CT descriptor and rationale. Typical CT Features of COVID-19 include peripheral bilateral ground glass opacities with or without consolidation or crazy paving. These opacities can have a rounded morphology and later in the course of the disease demonstrate features of organizing pneumonia such as the reverse halo sign. The reporting language really focuses on what's in the literature, that is, these are commonly reported imaging features for COVID-19 pneumonia. There's no statement on likelihood or suspicion, which is in part related to how prevalent the disease is in your area and how the patient presented. We also wanted to emphasize that these CT features are not pathognomonic and can be seen in some other disease processes such as influenza and organizing pneumonia. Also note that COVID-19 is in parentheses indicating that it is an optional statement should you want to include or not include this in your radiology report. Here's a CT of somebody with COVID-19 demonstrating typical features. We can see that there are multiple bilateral ground glass opacities. We could also note that some of these opacities are peripheral in location and when studied more closely demonstrate a rounded morphology as well as visible intralobular lines indicating crazy paving. Another person that tested positive for COVID-19 with typical features, again demonstrating multiple bilateral ground glass opacities, some of which appear rounded in morphology. Crazy paving was not evident in this case. Another person with typical features demonstrating multiple bilateral peripherally oriented opacities, which appear somewhat rounded in morphology. This was a case of mainly consolidation, though with a small amount of ground glass. Opacities do not necessarily have to be rounded in morphology. They could just be peripheral, as in this case. We see that there's predominantly ground glass opacities located in the outer edges of the lung. Some of these opacities demonstrate visible intralobular lines in keeping with crazy paving. Two additional cases of typical CT features where we could see that there is peripheral opacities of mixed density, both consolidation and ground glass. Notice the central aspects of the lung are spared. It's important to emphasize, though, that these features are not pathognomonic for COVID-19. Here's a case of organizing pneumonia related to dermatomyositis on the left and influenza A pneumonia on the right. Notice that these both, both of these processes demonstrate peripheral opacities of consolidation in ground glass, and that organizing pneumonia, this opacity actually does appear around it. These imaging features do overlap with COVID-19. An indeterminate CT appearance for COVID-19 are CT features that are commonly reported in this setting, however, are much less distinguishable from other routinely encountered acute lung diseases on CT. The first two columns again reflect the category and rationale. There should be an absence of CT features typical for COVID-19. And then what makes something indeterminate for COVID-19? Again, we're going to see ground glass opacity with or without consolidation. However, there's no specific distribution or morphology. That is, they're non-rounded and non-peripheral. We also wanted to comment on what to do when you see a couple tiny ground glass opacities. As an incidental finding in a non-endemic area, these probably carry much less weight than in someone under investigation or in a highly prevalent area. Standardized reporting language again reflects what's in the literature rather than stating a likelihood or suspicion level. Imaging features can be seen with COVID-19 pneumonia, though are non-specific and can occur in a variety of both infectious and non-infectious processes. Again, note that COVID-19 is in parentheses. Indeterminate CT features in someone that did test positive for COVID-19 demonstrate multiple bilateral ground glass opacities. These opacities don't have a clear distribution. That is, they're not clearly peripheral. They're not clearly central. In addition, when studied more closely, they have a non-rounded morphology. Another case of someone that tested positive for COVID-19 with indeterminate features, demonstrating patchy bilateral ground glass opacities without a clear rounded morphology and non-peripheral distribution. These features of COVID-19 
as stated earlier, are very nonspecific and can be seen in a wide variety of diseases. This is somebody with a drug toxicity demonstrating widespread patchy ground glass opacities without a clear distribution. Two more cases, drug toxicity on the left and pneumocystis pneumonia on the right, again demonstrating patchy and diffuse ground glass opacities. These are indeterminate features for COVID-19 pneumonia and can be seen in a wide variety of diseases. An atypical CT appearance of COVID-19 demonstrates features that are infrequently or not reported in the literature. These are more commonly seen in other infectious or non-infectious patterns of injury, and an alternative diagnosis would be favored. The first two columns again demonstrate the CT descriptor and rationale. It's important to note that you should have the absence of typical or indeterminate features, and this is important because you could have two coexistent processes, one of which could be a viral pneumonia. What makes something uh, atypical? The presence of low bar segmental consolidation, discrete small nodules such as a bronchiolytic pattern, central lobular or entrine bud opacities, lung cavitation, or intralobular septal thickening with pleural effusions. Standardized reporting language again comments on what's reported in the literature that these findings are atypical or uncommonly reported for COVID-19, and COVID-19 is again noted to be in parentheses. This is somebody with atypical features for COVID-19. We can see an area of segmental consolidation on the left upper lobe on CT, as well as on chest radiograph. This person did test positive, however, there was some debate as to whether or not this actually reflected COVID-19 or a secondary infectious process such as a bacterial pneumonia. The case on the left is Klebsiella pneumonia, demonstrating areas of consolidation without ground glass opacity. Within this consolidation, we can see an area of cavitation. Cavitation has not been reported in COVID-19. The case on the right is a case of atypical mycobacteria, which demonstrates train but opacities, as well as a single focus of cavitation. Features again infrequently or not reported in the setting of COVID-19. Two cases of viral pneumonia, RSV on the left and human metanumavirus on the right, demonstrating a bronchiolytic pattern within the lung parenchyma, characterized by tree and bud opacities and central lobular nodules. These findings are infrequently reported in COVID-19, though can be commonly seen in some other viral infections. The last category is negative for pneumonia, and this is pretty self-explanatory. There are no CT features to suggest pneumonia, particularly consolidation in ground glass opacity or small nodules, and the standardized language uh, reflects that. Also in the standardized language, you'll see a separate phrase, CT may be negative in the early stages of COVID-19. Again, this is just reiterating the fact that there is low negative predictive values in the very early stages of infection. Again, note that this is in parentheses, and because it's in parentheses, it is an optional statement and is really reserved in cases where the person is under investigation. When implementing standardized reporting, you want to take into account two clinical scenarios. The first being persons under investigation where there already is clinical suspicion for COVID-19. And the second, when you have CT features present, potentially attributable to COVID-19 as an incidental finding. When reporting CT findings in persons under investigation, we suggest using the standardized language provided. However, we acknowledge that some institutions or referring clinicians prefer not to have COVID-19 in the reports even when patients are under investigation. And again, this is reiterated in the fact that COVID-19 is in parentheses and is optional language. Typical indeterminate and atypical standardized reporting language with COVID-19 in parentheses. Again, you do not have to include this in a report should your institution not like this term. Instead, you could use viral pneumonia for the typical and indeterminate categories. For the atypical category, you may choose just to remove the term COVID-19 and then replace it with an alternative diagnosis. For negative, again, you don't have to mention this line, note CT may be negative in the early stages. This is optional, and again, it's really reserved for persons under investigation. When dealing with incidental findings potentially attributable to COVID-19, this is a more complex scenario. The first thing you want to do is take into account the prevalence of COVID-19 in your community. And you should only be using this language as an incidental finding when typical features are present. We don't want to use this language as incidental findings with atypical features or on a negative CT. Discretion needs to be used for incidental indeterminate features, that is, if you are in an endemic area and you see lots of ground glass opacity without a clear distribution, you should probably call the physician and ask them, do you think the patient has COVID-19 pneumonia and what they want to do about it? If you have a few tiny ground glass opacities in a non-endemic area, again, those findings may be less clinically relevant. 
Ultimately, if you want to mention COVID-19 in your report or raise the possibility of it, a phone call should be placed to the referring provider and consensus should be reached as to whether to mention COVID-19 or not. And should you not want to mention COVID-19, viral pneumonia is an alternative. In conclusion, at this time, routine screening CT is not recommended for COVID-19. However, we believe it is important to provide guidance in the reporting of CT findings potentially attributable to this infection and to reduce re reporting variability, particularly amongst radiologists in the same institution. Implementation may vary depending on local factors and institutional preferences, which underscores the need to communicate with your referring provider should standardized language be adopted. Thank you, and hopefully you found this talk helpful.